Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, BTM here bringing you match number 29 in my ongoing Age of Empires 3 series. We have a 1v1, it was a random quick search match. I'm playing as the Aztec facing against a Ottoman on the map of Himalayas. And right off the bat, I do have a very specific strategy I'm going to be trying for the very first time in this game. Now the basic premise of this strategy is to take advantage of the Aztec's amazing second age units and the Aztec's unique ability of starting with a warrior priest. So that is kind of our goal to utilize these unique abilities of Aztecs. Now I did screw up slightly in the beginning. I sent my warrior priest initially with my explorer. I shouldn't have. He should have been near my town center ready to go because the first thing I'm going to do with my warrior priest is I'm going to build a fire pit and I'm going to get him dancing on the EXP dance on my fire pit as soon as possible. I, I lost a few precious seconds there by accidentally having him walk away. Fortunately, I'm going to correct the mistake right now, start getting my fire pit out and my warrior priest will be ready to go. Now we're going to age to the second age using the messenger which allows us to age faster and we're going to use... Um, or age, I should say, with 16 villagers. Now that will allow us to have a very, very strong economy, but once we age, we're not going to keep making villagers for a little bit. It's almost like a 10-10 rush in the fact that we age and then we don't make more villagers. Let me explain how that's going to work out. What's basically going to happen is after we age, we're going to send the 10 Mesa Tulian cards, which are basically they're the Aztec's equivalent of skirmishers, and then we're going to ha have been acquiring a lot of gold, and we're going to use that gold to send units that don't cost population. So after building this one house, and then another house in the transition between aging, we're not going to age anymore, or that at least is our um, plan, I should say. I did get a little bit of a boo-boo here, but it looks like it all worked out. I could have had my deck and my card sent slightly faster. Now, you do send the three villager card as your first card right off the bat. So, what's basically going to happen is we are going to get the 16 villagers, and when we age, we are going to split our villagers to a five villagers on food or so, and then the rest on gold. Because the three cards that we're really looking at sending in the second age are going to be the 11 Roladorios for 500 gold, the 9 Mayan Pikemen for 500 gold, and I believe the 9 Zapatok Lightning Warriors for 500 gold. So all around those are very, very good units in the fact that they only cost 500 gold or 50 gold equivalent a head to have. So if we can get 12 units on gold and we can start spamming them, we're in great shape. We can also send the big button from our town center, and we're going to want to be able to utilize that. So that's kind of our goal. It's almost like a little bit of a mercenary strategy with the Aztec. Now you may have noticed here, I'm checking out the treasures, and I had seen a treasure over here which was 150 gold, and it was protected by three tigers, and I am going to go for this treasure for a few reasons. One, it is protected by three tigers, so while that's going to make it hard to get, I should be able to kill them, survive it, and get a lot of experience from killing the three, the two, two of the tigers, so that will provide... Um, experience, which will get me closer to my shipments, which is very important, because this is a shipment-derived strategy. And it'll provide us 150 of the gold for our first 500, which will allow us to get our mercenaries even faster, which is absolutely excellent. And that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to manage to kill both of those tigers. We're going to get a shipment available, but we're not going to send our second shipment until we get to the second age. And that, of course, as I previously mentioned, will be the 10 Massatulians. Um, I do send my explorer here just to start sieging that trade post, and I do that just because I'm not sure what else would be better to do, to be honest. Um, I wasn't too worried about scouting out the map. And I wasn't too worried about him knowing what's going on. So as you can see here, I'm approaching making my 16th villager, so I am going to start shifting everybody onto wood because I need to get my second house up as fast as possible. Initially, after I get my second house up, I am then going to shift them all to gold ASAP. So that's kind of what's going on in my head at this moment. It's a really cool strategy. I really love the Aztecs. Um, I was actually surprised when I was told that I hadn't had any Aztec material up on this channel because Aztecs were actually the first civilization I had ever started playing on in Rush. You may have also noticed that we did save our one gold crate we started with for the end of the game. Um, we're going to gather it now. It's going to be very helpful. Now, unfortunately, we did make a little bit of a boo-boo. Um, I was just a few seconds off in terms of how fast I had that house up. I could have sent my 10 Massatulians slightly faster, but... It's not the end of the world. Now, it is going to be interesting here, though, because he is playing Ottoman, so he is going to rush, undoubtedly. And I'm not too worried about that, because I know that Massatulians can easily outnumber and overpower the expensive units he's going to attack him with, I should say. Now, you may notice I am making villagers after I said I wasn't. Technically, it really comes down to how well you can manage it. If you can manage to keep 
sending all the army shipments and making villagers, then you're in great shape. If you can't, then you shouldn't, if that makes any sense. Now, you may notice here, we have 30 out of 30 population, but we do have the 500 gold, so I'm going to send my Zapotok allies right away. And another card I'd like to point out, at the very least for this deck, is I do have the 5 Jaguars card in there. Again, the whole premise is free units um, that don't take up population, or units that don't take up population if, even if they aren't free. We did get our first set of costing un costly units and now we're going to go to get our second with the gold we're also not going to make another villager our goal here is going to be to hold off on making another villager and buy our aztec scouting party and even though 450 food for three jaguar prom prom knights isn't necessarily the best they are very powerful and it'll allow us to get to the next sh stage of the um, home city big button upgrade tree which will be even more jaguar prom knights now i do separate my tiger and my Makui? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Makui off here. That way I can explore the map just a little bit more without having any loss of productivity from my main army. Um, I do catch his explorer here and I am worried about him bothering to make trade posts so I am going to send some units to harass him but it really is just that. Just some mild harassment. And here as soon as I get 500 gold for my second shipment of natives which I'll be sending as soon as I get another shipment um, I shipped them all to wood because now at my, this point of the game, I'm hopefully going to switch to more of a traditional army. I do have the 11 Roladorios I could send, and maybe in hindsight I should have sent those. It would have been helpful, but I didn't think of it. I decided to go straight to wood because I wanted to get my economy going. Because This is the one danger of this strategy is the, this point of the game where your economy starts to falter because you're relying on non-population counting units and you're not making... Uh, wood and the such if that or houses and the such fortunately though i feel like we're gonna have a pretty good rush on him here we do have a good amount of melee units which are good at siege and we do have a good amount of massatulians which will be able to completely micromanage out those janissaries and that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna send my siege units to burn down the barracks and i'm gonna send my massatulians to burn to start micromanaging out his janissaries and that's what's going on he does call out Minutemen here to protect myself so I am going to try to get my um, heavy infantry out of the way so they don't die but then I end up just running them back into melee him and kill him because I feel as if it's not the end of the world to do that at this point they're close enough to where I can melee them all and I have more units coming maybe not the best decision but it was a decision I chose to make I do have nine mine spearmen coming, and here at this point, I am going to start making more houses because I do need to pick up my economy. I did feel though pretty in the driver's seat at this point. Um, I mean, seven minutes, forty-five minutes, seven minutes, forty-five seconds into the game, and we're going to take down his town center, and we've killed all his initial janissaries. I'm wondering at this point though if he's going for some kind of fast like fortress or some kind of weird strategy because it seems highly unusual that he isn't doing. He doesn't have more Janissaries. He hasn't rushed me. So I, I assumed at this point that he was going for a Fast Fortress. However, it's no matter. I'm going to start putting some pressure on him. Because if he is going for a Fast Fortress, I simply just can't allow him to walk straight to the Third Age unhindered. Now, I did, at the very least, though, did cause some pressure for him. Because I destroyed his barracks and I, I forced him to get Minutemen. So that's a very, very good plus for us. Now, at this point, because we have more houses, we're going to start buying normal units or sending normal units aka more Massachusetts, and we're going to play this game from here on out a little bit more normally I guess um, he actually has a score advantage ironically at this point but I feel like we're definitely in the driver's seat in terms of momentum I am gonna start building a forward war hut and I do have more houses and I believe I'm gonna build a market here soon um, I am gonna build a market here soon so that's what's going on now the key to the strategy, I guess, the biggest key to the strategy really, is kind of getting them off balance, and I feel like we did a very good job with that here. Um, he didn't rush me, he had to have been going for a fast fortress, but we were able to thankfully get him off his feet, and now it's really up to us just to kind of finish it. His score's plummeted basically, what's going on, but I don't have enough military strength to take down his town center without the, his villagers garrisoned in his town center, killing all of my own units unfortunately. So that's why I pulled back a little bit. I didn't want to senselessly use those units. I knew that I could get some very, very big and fast shipments coming. So I decided to wait, amass my units from a shipment or two, maybe take out the trade posts, and then go in for the death killing blow. And that's what I'm going to do here. Now that I have that war hut built and those units, I'm going to use my war hut as a forward drop off point for my units. And I'm going to 
start taking out his trading posts, and I'm going to finish him off. I guess you can't really call it a fast fortress, because he is going to get to the fortress age of 10 minutes, but, um, spoiler by the way, he's going to get to the fortress very, very soon. I'm just going to start making Mesa Tulings from my forward war hut now. I do start putting villagers back onto, uh, coin, because my goal is at this point to get more... Mercenaries, I want to send the Roladorio card. Technically, I should have left my villagers on coin to begin with, and then send that Roladorio card at a earlier point in the game, but I didn't. I'm, I'm kind of making up the strategy as I go along, adapting it. I did uh, get the strategy from online, but I have adapted it for my own purposes. Now, at this point, I do run in and save my explorer. That was actually what this was all about with those um, Mesa Julian. I did send them in there solely for the purpose of saving him. Um, I see him get to the Fortress Age, though, and I realize, and I look at his deck, I assume he's got Spy, spy coming. Either way, a lot of cavalry and cannon coming, so I decide not to go for the Coyote Runners. I decide to send Puma Spearman because I assume that he's going to send out... I assume he's going to send out the cavalry first, considering that I do have a lot of Mesa Tulians, and he might be expecting me to do that, so hopefully I can... Um, Get him off balance by sending out Puma Spearman and hopefully kill his cavalry. If he does end up amassing cannon, it's not a problem because I should have enough units to take them out without any major problems. Because if you look at my second army, it's quite large. Um, 30 Mesa Tilian, a good amount of mercenaries and siege units. He's definitely in trouble. This town center will definitely fall down without much problem. Not to mention I have enough economic support. I can now just pretty much pump out units as will from my forward war hut and send shipments there. So the game is fairly in my hand. Um, he was a little bit low ranked, lower ranked this game than I probably would have liked to have played. Unfortunately, it was like I said, a quick search game, and you take what you can get with that. Um, sometimes it can be hard to get a game, and I just did quick search, so that's why this game came up. But all around, it's a very good strategy. So I'll definitely bring some more videos with it. And I do end up here killing off the town center. Um, I end up pulling back my army. Instead of running forward to attack the Janissaries, I do a little bit of a tactical thing here. And I decide I'm going to run away from him. That way he has to come up to my main army and attack me. And I definitely think that was a smarter decision. Um, I have a humongous advantage overall in total number of units and only have more units coming so at this point in the game it's it's pretty much over i don't think there's really anything more he can do about it um we're just gonna have to clean up a little bit and finish him off and he chooses of course at this point to resign it is gg of course so that's this aztec strategy guys it's a little bit different than your standard build two war huts and crank out mesa tulians it's very nice because most people don't expect you to have so many um Siege units early in the game, they expect you have light skirmishers. So, going with the strategy is definitely a good choice. And I guess in hindsight, looking at the post game, I, I was very, very happy with it because if you look at it again, I was actually less than him in resources and in I lost more units than him and he killed more. So, I was, I was kind of happy to win. It's always good to win when you do more with less, I guess. So, it was a very, very good game. We'll definitely be getting trying this strategy against some higher competition and seeing how it works out. Um, and I'll definitely be doing a Aztec deck strategy coming very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'd like to let you know I am now on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Big Thunder Man, just the way my YouTube channel is. So please come by, subscribe to me. I don't know what my first tweet will be, so if you have an idea for that, leave it in the comments. As always, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Um, we're getting to your requests, guys. It's a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until I see all of you lovely, lovely people next time, Good luck and happy hunting.